71, it says, addressing the, the Christians specifically here, uh, it says, the people of the scripture do not commit excess in your religion to say about Allah except the truth, the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah and his word, which he directed to Mary and his soul, and the practice says, created of a command from him. So believe in Allah and his, and his messengers, and do not say three, this is, it is better for you. Indeed, Allah is but one God. Exalted is he about having a son. To him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. And sufficient is Allah the dispose, as a disposer of affairs. So you see, Lizzie lied that Muhammad sallam, never accepted uh, Jesus as the Messiah, as the Christ. Of course it is. And it's confirmed in the Quran, in the Hadith several times. So that is a blatant lie from a Christian like Lizzie. <laughs> فتعالى الله الملك الحق ولا تعجل بالقرآن من قبل أن يقضى إليك وحيه وقل رب زدني علما Just in time. Just in time. Where's the camera? <laughs> okay, so what is the topic? Is it salvation in Islam? In Islam or in Christianity? Oh. Okay. We'll, we'll compare the salvation. You want to start? Yeah. You can, you can start. Okay. So, two minutes again, yeah? Before you start, is it, can you put down you? Can you put, leave it to like half an hour? On yeah? the collar. That, not too long. Half an hour. Okay. Will that be enough for you or 45 minutes? I don't know. Let's we'll see how we go. Let's we'll see how we go. Okay. Let's go. Yeah, let's say half an hour, okay? Okay. Good. Okay. So, in the name it's of Five o'clock exactly. Okay. Right. Okay. So, um, in the name of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, praise you, Father, for this beautiful day. Praise you, Lord Jesus, for dying for us on the cross. Thank you, Holy Spirit, for strengthening us all the time. And thank you so much for giving us this opportunity to lift the name of Jesus high and to preach about salvation in Christianity. Um, it's, I love this topic because it just shows how amazing the God of the Bible is that he was sent his own son to die on the cross for us. That he's so merciful that he's laid down his life for us um, to provide us um, eternity forever and forgiveness forever. And this is what I want Muslims to know more than anything, even if they forget every other thing I say. Um, but the reason I want to like, was that into this topic today was because of Hashim. Um, we just had a debate on the Trinity, and uh, Hashim said uh, he finished his debate by saying, Lizzie, you need to choose Allah, you need to come to Islam um, because that's how you will be saved. And that's actually very interesting because uh, having read the Quran myself and having studied a little bit about Islam, I cannot find uh, anything, any real guarantees of salvation anywhere in the texts. Uh, whereas what I love about my Bible uh, is that Jesus says, God so loved the world that he gave his only son, that whoever believes in him will perish and have eternal life. God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Jesus is so clear, he doesn't leave us in room for any doubt, really, that by believing in his name, we'll be saved. He says it again in Romans 10, he says, everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Um, so I love the clarity that, that Jesus uh, gives, and he also showed he had the power um, to uh, over, over death itself by rising again from dead. When I compare it with the Quran, I don't find anything in it uh, to suggest that you do this, you will definitely uh, get paradise. So maybe, uh, Hashim, you can enlighten me. Uh, so basically, busy. I mean, let's start with Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, Alhamdulillah Rasulullah Rasulullah Kareem. So praise be to Allah and uh, peace be upon the Messenger of Allah. Um, so with respect to this particular topic on salvation, see, you see, salvation is something where it should be clear in your scripture. So just like belief in one God is clear in the scriptures, belief in the salvation should also be clear. Does the Bible promise people who believe in one God, in three persons, salvation? No, it doesn't say that. Does it say that people who believe in the death 
and the resurrection of Jesus, yes, we'll have salvation. Again, if you look at the Old Testament, do you see the death and resurrection of Jesus in that? Are you going to tell us that the Old Testament people had a different promise of salvation from those in the New Testament? Let's say for argument's sake, it is there in the New Testament. The death and those people who believe in the death and resurrection of Jesus, or believe in Him as uh, basically God Almighty, or whatever it is you want to call, let's say that is there. Why is this message not given in the Old Testament? Why do we see this inconsistency? What is the salvation in Islam? You see the salvation in Islam is believe in one God, yes? To believe in His Messenger, to believe in His, uh, in his revelations, to believe in the angels. All this you can find in the Old and the New Testament. You see the message of in Islam of salvation is consistent. Allah promises paradise clearly in many different passages in the Quran. And this is something very clear again. Now, you said that you read the Quran. Have you not seen these promises of paradise? What was the condition for that? The condition is the righteousness of the being. To believe in one God. To believe in the messenger. And this is like you see this thing for the Quran. Okay, so uh, it's very interesting, isn't it? When I ask Hashim, um, why, how am I going to get saved in Islam? But actually, he spends the first one minute, 20 seconds, talking about the Bible. It's interesting, isn't it? And he doesn't dive straight into his scriptures and try and get me to Islam by showing me how amazing the salvation it is that it offers. He can't do it. Because, and then the answer he eventually gets around to uh, is, he says, uh, it's about believing in one God, believing in the prophets, believing in the angels. Uh, perhaps, Hashim, you can show me a verse from the Quran uh, that says very specifically, if you repeat the Shahada, if you believe in the books, if you believe in the angels, you will go to paradise. You will be in paradise with Allah. I'd love it if you can show me that verse. But I won't push you on that too much because I know for a fact that you won't be able to um, show me that verse. But I can tell you from the Quran that actually, uh, also and from the Hadith, that how to attain salvation in Islam, in Islam is actually incredibly complicated and actually contradictory. And so this is my appeal to Muslims, like don't fall for this very complicated, very contradictory doctrine of salvation, because it is no salvation at all. Uh, and actually, I would really implore you to come to the Lord Jesus Christ, who I've just proved at the beginning of this debate, it's incredibly clear. You know, he says, for God did not send his son in the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. That's John chapter 3, verse 17. And he says that he's poured out his blood, uh, and he's come to give his life as a ransom for many. That's Mark 10, verse 45. Um, but maybe in my, in my remaining time, we can start to unpack some of those uh, complications and those contradictions in Islam. Well. So, uh, so, so uh, would you say that there are Quranic verses that suggest that if you do enough God of good works, you'll go to paradise? So, for example, Surah 2.25, Give glad tidings, O Muhammad, unto those who believe and do good works, that theirs are gardens underneath which rivers flow, as often as they are regaled with food and the fruit thereof. Okay, so that's an example of one that suggests good works for paradise. Okay, so you did mention, yes, there's a promise of paradise, like I said. And that is what salvation is. Basically, you will be admitted into paradise. You see, this is what I asked her about the Old Testament. She hasn't responded to that. The reason I went to the Bible is because your Bible is inconsistent and incoherent as far as the Trinity and the belief in the most important doctrine, the one belief, the belief in one God. Again, when Jesus was asked what is the most important commandment, that is the exact answer he gave. Mark 12, 29, the same thing. Here, Israel, your Lord God is one. So there you go, Lizzie. You actually are not reading the Bible, you're reading from outside the Bible perhaps. You haven't shown us the salvation. To believe in the Son, to believe this, to believe that, yes. It says, if you believe in Jesus, then you'll attain salvation. Is that what you're trying to say? We believe in Jesus. Not in the way you do. But you see, in the Bible, Jesus never claimed to be God. So actually, I believe in Jesus the way Jesus wants me to believe in Him. To believe in Him as the Messiah. Yes, to believe in Him as a servant of God. Where in the Quran does it say that you will be gaining, uh, sorry, you'll be, if you say, if you do X, Y, and Z, you'll be going to paradise. One verse you have already read, here's another verse, and it says, whoever does righteous deeds, whether male or female, while being a believer, yes, those will enter paradise and will not be wronged, the, not even as much as a speck on a date seat. Now you see, this is what the Quran says in chapter 4, 124. The messenger of Allah says, when those deserving the paradise enter paradise, Allah the blessed and the exalted will ask, Do you wish me to give you anything more? They will say, Have you not, bright have you not brightened our faces? 
Have you not made us enter paradise and saved us from the fire? He will then lift the whale from the eyes, from their eyes, and of all things given to them, nothing will be dearer to them than the sight of, of Allah, than the sight of the Lord, the mighty and the glorious. So you see, this is the beautiful thing that the Muslims will be given. And this is something that the Prophet ﷺ said in Sahih Muslim, this hadith. And this is what we believe in. This is the salvation we are talking of. Where is such clear verses in the Bible? Yeah, sure. Isn't it interesting that uh, Hashim, again, he keeps going back to the Bible, and I've told him very clearly uh, the doctrine of salvation. Okay, he wants to keep coming back to that because he can't really formulate a, a, a decent doctrine of salvation from the Quran. In fact, he's actually gone straight to the Hadith when he's talking about those deserving of paradise and to paradise. It doesn't say how they've actually got there. It yeah. says when those yeah. deserving of paradise enter paradise. No, no, that's a okay. 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 Okay, do you wish it could okay when those deserving of paradise enter paradise, Allah the blessed and exalted will ask, Do you wish we could give you anything more? They will say, Have you not brightened our faces? But hang on a minute. It says those in paradise will say, Brilliant, we're in paradise. It doesn't say how they've got there. Now the problem is is that he also did uh, quote some verses from the Quran that? that say that say that actually if, if you do good works you'll get to paradise. But then there's a problem because here the contradiction comes. The Quran also says that it's completely about and its mercy. So let's look at Surah 24, 21. Okay. O ye who believe, follow not Satan's footsteps, if any will follow the footsteps of Satan, who will command what is shameful and wrong. And were it not for the grace and mercy of Allah on you, not one of you would ever have been pure. But God doth purify who he pleases. So it's actually saying you'll only get to paradise through Allah's mercy. And this is also confirmed by the Hadith. Let's listen to this. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari, volume 7, uh, book 70, number 5. Okay. I heard Alice Apostle saying the good deeds of any person will not make him enter paradise. Hang on a minute. Alice Apostle Muhammad is saying your good deeds will not get you into paradise. And yet in the Quran, which he supposedly heard from Allah, it says those good deeds will get you into paradise. If I was a Muslim right now, I have to say I would be feeling really, really confused. Which is why I say come back to the Bible where Jesus makes it absolutely clear in the Gospels. He doesn't need to of other extraneous sources. Okay. okay, so the person who's who's basically alleging that I use the Bible, I use the Bible uh, basically to explain whatever it is. She used the Quran throughout this period of two minutes. Okay, so the very person who's basically making allegations cannot cannot actually stand by her own principle, unfortunately. So anyway, let's go back to the the topic that she touched upon, which is the mercy of Allah. You see. Going to paradise, if that is not the mercy of Allah, I don't know what is. Who's going to put you in paradise, Lizzie? It is Allah, of course. It is the mercy of Allah. With regards to your good deeds, yes, it will get you into the different, depending on what degree of paradise. That is what is going to establish. Because there's going to be the mizan, there's going to be the scales on which your good deeds will be weighed. Did you miss that bit? Which you bring up on many topics. I don't know why that. There's a reason for that. Because you see, people who do good deeds in different degrees will be rewarded in different degrees. People who do bad deeds in different degrees will be rewarded in, 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 in their degrees as well. So this is very clear if you read. Do not isolate one verse or one hadith. Yes, but the hadith and the Quran are very clear that Allah will give you salvation if you do, if you satisfy those conditions. And that's exactly what I said. So there's nothing contradictory to what I said. And if it is this, you see in Christianity, how do you attain salvation? Do you have to believe in the death and crucifixion of Jesus? Yes. Was that the one justice that we are looking for? That this innocent being is basically crucified. And this was a plan of, the, of God Almighty. The wrath of God is poured upon this poor innocent being. This person, Jesus Christ, is this how you attain salvation? By causing injustice? The, how is that justice even? I don't understand. Because this is what you say. To me, it looks like injustice. Putting the sin of others onto, onto the one who is innocent. That is completely against Ezekiel 18, 24. Where he says those people, who are, the son will not be uh, uh, basically accountable for the sin of the father. And the father not for the son. You just contradicted yourself. No, I did not. Okay. Carry on. It's very interesting, isn't it? That Hashim, his, he told me, this, let's go 
back to why we're having this debate in the first place, okay? Hashim told me at the end of our last debate, didn't you, Hashim? Okay, it's true. Uh, when we were debating, debating the Trinity, you said, Lizzie, you come to Allah, you come to Islam, and then you'll be saved. I'm thinking, wow, cool, right? Maybe I have got it wrong. Maybe if I do go to Islam, I'll be saved. And yet, you are not proving for me at all from any of your hadith, from any of your Quran, that if I do certain things in Islam, I will be saved. In anything, what I get is a mire of contradiction, okay? We've seen some Quranic verses, a few Quranic verses that say, you know, your good deeds, if you do good deeds, it will lead you to paradise. This is from the Prophet of Islam, right? Who hears from Allah, He's, and this is what he reports. And yet, the same Apostle, the same Muhammad says, the good deeds of any person will not make him enter paradise. None can enter paradise through his good deeds, okay? Uh, he says again, in that he says in Bukhari, uh, 17, number 577, same thing again, volume 8, Bukhari, uh, so book 76, number 474. Um, do good deeds properly, sincerely, and moderately, and receive good news because one's good deeds will not make him enter paradise. So tell me, Muslims, like which way is it? Are you going to? Do, are your good deeds going to get you there or not? Or is it going to be the mercy of Allah? I know my Bible tells me absolutely unconditionally that my salvation is purely about the mercy of God. Isn't God so amazing? It says very clearly that our works will not get us to heaven. Okay. Uh, no one should boast in their works, it says in Ephesians 2, but it says it's a gift of God. Righteousness and mercy is a gift from God. But in Islam, you have completely contradictory statements. So perhaps you can actually clarify things a little bit. Maybe I've got this wrong. Maybe there is a short way to paradise. Maybe you can help me out here. Okay. There's also, um, I could read a few other contradictory uh, hadith, but my time's running out, so I'll let you go. Okay. So basically, uh, I, even though I've explained to her the salvation in Islam from both the Quran and the Hadith, it says that you will enter paradise and I've shown her the condition. She isolates one particular Hadith, takes it out of context as usual, which is Lizzie all, all uh, ri ri which has got rich and Lizzie all over it, basically. And this is what it is. You take it out of con context. I can show you several different Hadiths, no, uh, no problem whatsoever. But you see, if your salvation is dependent on believing the in the crucifixion and uh, basically the, uh, the yeah the, the resurrection and the crucifixion of Jesus, then why we, why does in Mark three twenty nine we read this? But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. So so Lizzie, there you go. You will not be forgiven. Even the blood of Jesus cannot wipe that out. You will be eternally in hellfire if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit. And this is what Mark three twenty nine says. But whoever blasphemes against the Holy Spirit will never be forgiven. They are guilty of an eternal sin. You see, eternal sin means you'll never be forgiven regardless of what it is. What does the Quran say about basically sin and about this? The Quran says, and whoever does righteous did, whether male or female, will, while being a believer, those will enter paradise and will not be wronged. And this is very clear in the Hadith as well. So we see in the Bible, it gives you different contradictory statements. In one, it says, if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you will not enter paradise. And in another, according to her, they will enter paradise, all those believers. So there you go. And this is what it is. At the end of the day, if you want clarity, this is what the Bible says and what Quran says. Now we read, for example, in, 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 in the Quran and in the Hadith, it is very clear that belief is one of the key factors. What does belief include? Belief in Amana Billahi. Believe in Allah, His angels, His books, His revelation, and His uh, prophets. This is what belief is. So these are the conditions, and belief in the in, in basically the uh, the last hour. Yeah, that's fine. Let's see. A few seconds. Here. Uh, okay, Hashim. Again, um, you, you want to come and keep attacking the Bible. Now, but this is the thing: attacking the Bible is not going to make me want to take the shahada and believe that Islam is my only way of salvation. You want to kind of sell Islam to me, and you still haven't really done that. Um, what you have, though, done is you've raised something very interesting. You said in your couple of points before this, you said, oh, you know, isn't it mean that God would choose Jesus, an innocent person, uh, like an innocent third party, uh, to, to, to die for other people? Now, I agree that's a horrific idea, but here's the thing. A, Jesus is not simply a human being, he's God himself, okay? So it's God himself coming to earth, picking the flesh. He's not picking an innocent third party, he's actually taking the flesh on himself so he can pay the price for us. It's all that's how merciful God is. But also, you think that's horrific? What I think is pretty horrific is what we read in the Hadith, which is actually Allah throws Jews and Christians into hell 
to pay for the sins of Muslims. Did you know that? Because that is really pretty horrible. Let me read for you. Abu Burda reported on the authority of his father that Allah's apostle said no Muslim would die, but Allah would admit in his stead a Jew or a Christian in hellfire. Okay, so let's think about that. That's Sahih uh, Muslim uh, 37 number 6666. Okay, so Allah will admit a Jew or a Christian in hell instead of a Muslim. Isn't that, doesn't that go against the Quran itself? Where the Quran says no one can bear the burden of another. Okay, and doesn't, isn't Allah doing exactly the horrific thing that you are saying that. Uh, Jesus is doing that is so that um, I don't believe he does as a Christian, I believe he's God man, so that's you've misunderstood that point. But actually you have a far worse problem. Okay, and if that and so your salvation, it, it, however it comes, is at the expense of other people, of Jews and Christians. Okay. So yeah, basically I mean again she hasn't actually given us any words where your salvation is guaranteed and even if it is then I showed her the contradiction which she hasn't responded to. Now, you see, she said that Jesus was innocent. Yes, he was innocent, which, my, which was my point. Why punish an innocent person for the others? As far as the Jews and Christians who will be in hellfire, this is because they haven't satisfied the condition of Tawheed. Guess what Jesus will do when he comes back in his second coming? Lizzie, is he going to be very nice to the Jewish people who, who reject him? Or is he going to kill them? He's going to make them his footstool. So your love and peaceful verses are basically not really going to help you there because it says clearly in Revelation that these people will be killed. They will be massacred regardless of who they are if they do not accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and their Savior. So you see those Jews and Christians, sorry, yeah, and the Muslims, yes, who reject Jesus Christ, they will be killed and massacred. So there's nothing, nothing over there, any, anything different with regards to their salvation because if they are not saved and they are not going to receive salvation they are going to receive the wrath of God yes the same thing in Islam what's the difference I don't know why you're making such a big fuss about it so those Christians and those Jews will be put into hellfire they rejected in the uh, uh, belief in the oneness of Allah and this is their end result because of that transgression this is their punishment so yes it's very clear as far as uh, the Jews and the Christians are concerned, what their faith will be, they reject the oneness of Allah. And the same thing in Christianity, they'll be punished. Those people who do not accept the Trinity, will they go to paradise? No, they'll be punished according to the Bible. They'll be thrown into this lake of fire. So there you go. And Jesus Christ was innocent. Him taking the punishment upon himself or whatever it is, that is injustice. Can you please answer why is it justice for God to die by his own creation? That Does that even make sense? Regardless of justice or injustice, God bind by his own de own creation. One more and then you wrap up. Yeah, okay. Um, okay, so actually, uh, her team has been kind of a little bit manipulative here uh, and said, uh, oh, isn't the Bible this basically, if you don't believe in Jesus, you'll go to hell. And he's absolutely right. The Bible does preach that you know, if, if those who do not uh, obey the gospel, or believe Jesus, um, their punishment is everlasting destruction. Okay, so that, that is absolutely true. However, um, that is because Jesus is not just a man, Jesus is God Himself come in the flesh. And every single soul will be judged on their personal response to Jesus. Jesus doesn't say, if you believe in me, that's great, that's one person saying, but I'm going to chuck a Muslim into hell just for fun. That is what Anna is saying. Anna is saying, you know, he's saying that actually Muslims, your recompense, your ticket, if you like, to paradise is a Jew or Christian going the other way. So actually it's far worse, it's far more uh, horrific. It's going against its own teachings. The fact when it says that no person can bear the burden of another, it's saying Muslims will be rescued by having Jews and Christians thrown into hell uh, for their salvation. So actually, uh, what, what Hashim is saying, he's got his theology kind of completely wrong there. Also, in terms of uh, Jesus, you know, this is what Jesus says. Jesus, he isn't forced into going to his death. He does it willingly. Here's a verse for you. 
the reason my father loves me is that I lay down my life. This is John 10, 17. The reason the father loves me is that I lay down my life, only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. Now, just let that sink in for a moment. What kind of person is Jesus? Do you have the authority, Daniel, to just lay down your life and then think, okay, I'm going to die and now I'm going to come back to life? Can you do that? Can you do that, Hashim? No, you can't. Who has the authority themselves to die and raise themselves to life? Nobody except Jesus, because Jesus is more than a man. He is God himself in the flesh. And he's okay. the only way to salvation. If he was God in the flesh, then how can his own creation kill him? If he laid down life by himself, then he committed suicide. So both ways you are complete. You, you lose that point out completely. I mean, from the very beginning, from the get-go. So at the end of the day, if this is what you have with regards to salvation, the topic was on salvation, that doesn't even satisfy any of the things with regards to salvation. Here is what it says with regards to salvation in the Bible for the born-again Christians. The born-again Christians who sin will lose their salvation according to the Bible, Lizzie. It says in John, in 1 John chapter 3, from verse 4 to 10, it says, no one who is born of God will continue to sin. Do the Christians continue to sin? Of course they do after they become born again because they are not sinless. It says here, no one who's, you not sin at all? Of course you do. No one who's, who's born again will continue to sin because God's seed, God's seed remains in them. They cannot go on sinning because they have been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God are and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Yes, do the Christians sin by not doing what God told them to? Yes, they do. Many things. And this is what he's saying in the Bible. Anyone who does not do what is right is not God's child. Nor is anyone who does not love their brother and sister. Are there Christians who do not love their brothers and sister? Yes, there are many. So you see these born again Christians, their salvation is not guaranteed based on that verse. It's actually taken away from them if they come in any sin or if they do not love their brother and sister. So there you go, Lizzie. That is the answer straight from the Bible. So your mood point about putting the sin on the Jews and Christians, you, saw, you see in the, in, in, in the Akhira, in the uh, afterlife, those people who wrong other people, their, their uh, good deeds will be put on the people whom they have wronged. Regardless of whether you are a Muslim, Christian, Hindu, Buddhist or whatever it is. So you see, that is a moot point again. So there you go. Your own Bible says that your salvation is not guaranteed. Okay? Mm -hmm. Alhamdulillah. Jazakallah. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much for your time, Lizzie. And I, you said, you said, that is a wrap up. You said wrap up, didn't you? One more. No, and then you no, wrap no, you said one more and you wrap up. And then you wrap up. No, no, I'm so sorry. Wrap up now. It's listen, not 5 listen, 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 listen. It's not 5 30. Sorry? It's not 5 30. Okay, you got four minutes? Yeah. Then like two don't. Minutes, two minutes but did you not say after this you wrap up? Yeah. Which is now. You wrap up now. No, no, after this, before this question. No, okay, anyway, no, no. that's fine. It's I on camera. It's, it's on camera anyway. I saw the You said 5.30. You said after this wrap-up. Carry on. So two minutes for her, two minutes for her. Okay. Can I see that verse on your phone? Do you uh, it's 1 John 4. Okay. Uh, so actually, I'm just looking at that scripture. Yeah, it's 1 John chapter 3, 4 to 10. Um, so uh, I'm looking at what uh, Hashim is quoting here. Yeah. Okay, and actually it's uh, it's it, it's not a commentary on salvation. Huh? It's, it's a commentary on uh, uh, exhorting Christians not to sin. So again, I think he's uh, got his theology wrong. There. But but what's interesting is that he loves to quote the Bible in defence of his argument, which is meant to lead me to Islam because it promotes salvation. So I'm just very confused. Uh, and I love that in the very same passage that he quoted, that he quoted, it, it says here, is this amazing, Muslim? You need to hear this. The reason the Son of God, Jesus, guys, the reason the Son of God appeared was to destroy the devil's work. Okay, no one. Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing that the Son of God, the Lord Jesus Christ, came to destroy the devil's work? Now, hang on. Let's see. Also, I love that my brother here, Hashim, is quoting from this book because actually it completely undermines his own religion. It says here in the same book in John, and he's got quite a lot of gall to go to this book. This is one John two. It says this. It says, "Who is the liar?" It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Yes. What did Muhammad say? Did Muhammad say that Jesus was the Christ? No, he did not.
got quite a lot of gall to go into this book. This is 1 John 2. It says this. It says, who is the liar? It is the man who denies that Jesus is the Christ. Yes. What did Muhammad say? Did Muhammad say that Jesus was the Christ? No, he did not. No. is the Antichrist. He denies the Father. The Quran says that Allah is a father to no one. Muhammad denied that God was a father. He denies the Father and the Son. Okay, that person is the Antichrist. So thank you, Shane. Thank you so much for completely undermining yourself there by going to this scripture and for completely failing, completely failing uh, to tell me in any way why I should convert to Islam for my salvation because like I say all I found is contradiction it says you can go by your works then it says it doesn't it says you've got to have Allah's mercy and it says that for Muslims to be saved a Jew or a Christian is going to be thrown to hell so actually guys forget it leave Islam come to Jesus who gives you a guarantee of salvation if you repent and leave it here no thanks no. Okay. Last two minutes, uh, sorry, sorry we will not be accepting Christianity because we don't want to worship a man as God that is paganism that is that is actually shirk. You're heckling now. I didn't. I didn't interrupt you. Lizzie, come on. Stick. Stick to. You've been good so far. Please do not destroy. Okay. By the way. By the way, Lizzie lied about Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He said he did not accept. It, did not say that he was a Christ. Isn't that? Have you not? He's, by the way, she also lied that she read the Quran because if she had read the Quran, she'll come across this verse, which is very clear in chapter four, surah an nisa one it says addressing the, the Christian specific, specifically here it says the oh, people of the scripture do not commit excess in your religion to say about Allah except the truth the Messiah Jesus the son of Mary was but a messenger of Allah and his word which he directed to Mary and his soul and the practice says created of a command from him so believe in Allah and his and his messengers and do not say three this is it is better for you indeed Allah is but one God exalted is he about having a son to him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth and sufficient is Allah the disposed as a disposer of affairs so you see Lizzie lied that Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam never accepted uh, Jesus as a Messiah as the Christ of course it is and it's confirmed in the Quran in the hadith several times so that is a blatant lie from a Christian like Lizzie that salvation is not mentioned in the Quran I gave her the promise of paradise the righteousness the righteousness of the person and his good deeds also will get you guaranteed paradise and of course it is a mercy of Allah ultimately which will get, get you to paradise but you see all these things count towards your salvation I gave her the words from the Bible which she didn't want to accept because it says these born again Christians, if they sin, they will be denied their salvation. Look at look at it. What the words actually implies very clearly that those people, if they actually do any wrong things, any sins, or do not consider the brother and sister do wrong them as well, they'll be not be given paradise. So there you go. No, I did not. All right. Thank you very much, Lizzie. Uh, I appreciate the time. <laughs> Lizzie say Ashadu. Ashadu. Alright guys, anyway, I'm glad we're talking finally. Not across each other, not.